Wash your hands, man. This can seem very tricky, but I've written、uh, all the rules down in this handy little chart, and I'm going to walk through problems with you, one of each type, so you can just kind of get a feel of how you should go about answering the questions. Okay, it's going to take practice and it's going to be frustrating, but if you do it exactly like I'm doing it right now, you should get the hang of it. All right, so first, your step one always is to decide what kind of bond it is. Okay, and let me go ahead and tell you this you do not have to copy down this chart. I think it would be helpful, but I will not count off if you do not copy down this chart. Okay. So, AGF, or really AGF2. So, my first step would be to go to the periodic table and see where these elements are. AG first. And it might take you a minute because you don't know the periodic table that well because you haven't had a lot of practice, but take your time. Found AG. And now I'm looking for F. A G F 2. Alright, it is a metal and a non metal. So that means it is ionic. Okay? Next, I have to recognize that it is in the, the zone of transition metals. Okay, so I can go to my chart. It is ionic. Then I should know that it is under transition metal. So, first, I named the transition metal. And, in, just in case you didn't see it, AG is silver. So, I'm going to write silver. My second step is to use Roman numerals. Roman numerals to show the charge, because it is a transition metal. Okay, I'm going to make the space to do this. And I have to figure out the charge by balancing this up here. Okay, so find F on the periodic table, and it has a minus one charge. Minus one charge. Alright, so each F has a minus one charge, but. This subscript is telling me that there are two of them. So you have two negative one charges that leave you with a charge of negative two. And remember, these are going to balance. That means this charge has to be positive two. So we have silver two, and we know that that F stands for fluorine. All right, I'm going to stop right there to see how I write the last element. Okay, the non metal should end in ide, so I have to follow that. It is going to be fluoride. And I think that actually doesn't have to have a U there, but I'm not really going to care that much about spelling as long as you get the major, major parts right. Okay, let's look at B A I 2. Okay, I'll use a different color. B A I 2. Let's find B A first. B A is barium. And it is here. That is not dark enough. B A I 2. Okay, so it is between a metal and a non metal. That tells me it is ionic and it's just a normal case. So that tells me that the cation or the metal comes first, the positive one comes first. So that is barium. We just write it normal according to our rules. Barium. And、uh, then you write the non metal, but change the N to ide. 
So that is going to be barium iodide. Easy. Okay, N2O5. Step one, find those on the periodic table and decide what kind of bond it is. Okay, N and O. Okay, they're right here. Side by side, both nonmetals, and that's going to give me a covalent bond, two nonmetals. And I have to use prefixes. For one of this, I'm going to use prefixes. And then there's the list of prefixes that you should have written down. So, I've got nitrogen, and there are two of them. So, I'm going to look at this. Two is di, so that is going to be di-nitrogen. Di-nitrogen. And then five oxygen, so I gotta go look back at this. Look for five. It is here. It is going to be penta. So go ahead and write penta. And then change the end to ide. So pentaoxide. We would really remove this A, but like I said, I don't really care about spelling right now as long as you get the idea. All right, last example NaNO3. This, I can tell immediately, is a polyatomic ion because it has three different elements. It has sodium, nitrogen, and oxygen. So if I see more than two elements, I know it is polyatomic. Look back, we got two elements here, two elements here, two elements here. So if you ever have more than two elements, you can automatically know it is polyatomic. So let's go to our chart and see what we do. Polyatomic. First, we name the metal. Okay. Name the metal Na. Na, let's go with a darker color. It is sodium. Na is sodium. So, sodium. Now, to see what to do next, I'm going back to my chart. Name polyatomic ion using the chart, and that is NO3. Right there, NO3. So get our polyatomic ion chart. NO3 is nitrate. So that is going to be sodium nitrate. Okay, I'm telling you, as long as you recognize what type of bond it is, and then can distinguish between normal ionic bonds, transition metals, and polyatomic ions, you will have absolutely no problems with this. Okay, please let me know if you have any questions. This is very, very important for your chemistry career. If you plan on taking another chemistry class ever, you've got to be really good at this.